Darmstadt is named after the German town of Darmstadt, which is where the big German accelerator is situated. A letter arrived from Germany, from the um, institute where they've made all the elements from 107 up to 112. And all being well, I want to go and visit the institute so that we can actually see where these elements have been made. So we're in Darmstadt in Germany where they made six different super heavy elements and I'm just going to show you how they did it. So imagine that this tree here is a lead target full of atoms and here I've got <coughs> an atom of a lighter element say copper or iron and I throw it and it doesn't stick and you go on throwing and throwing more and more and eventually, after days perhaps, they stick together and you make a big atom. This is one of your new elements. And the element, the atom flies off from the target to a detector. And when it gets to the detector, you may still be unlucky and it may all fall to bits. But if you're really lucky, little bits fall off, particle, one particle after another. And if you do very clever measurements from the way that these particles are formed, you can work out what the original atom was. And so you can say, I've discovered a new element. Well, this is a door to protect uh, the people outside from X-rays uh, in the accelerator tunnel here. Yeah. Very important for the health of the uh, colleagues. And how heavy is the door? The door has a weight of uh, approximately 70 tons because it's filled with lead. We're finally here in the linear accelerator hall where they accelerate the ions. So the ions start behind this wall behind me and they go down quite a narrow tube. So the tube is quite narrow, about 30 millimeters diameter and inside that there is the beam of ions. So let's walk along and see where the ions go. By the time we get to here, the ions are already traveling at 5% of the speed of light. So they accelerate enormously faster than a car or something like that because they're so light. And when they get to here, this is the so-called stripper, which strips off more electrons so they can accelerate the ions even faster. So let's keep going and see where the experiment is. So as we go along here, the ions are going faster and faster and faster all the time inside the tube. So here we're nearly at the end of the accelerator and the experiment is over there, 30 meters behind that wall. And we'll go around and see it in a minute. The ions here are accelerated and you can choose the speed. If you're driving the machine flat out, they can go up to 20% of the speed of light, but that's actually too much energy for making the elements. So for the elements, you settle for only 10% of the speed of the light. And the way you make them go fast is by putting in energy from radio waves. I've just been told by Ingo here from GSI that these radio waves really are the same frequency as broadcasts. And 20 years ago, the American Forces Network, which used to broadcast in Germany, used to increase their transmission power at five o'clock when the soldiers went for their tea and they could notice this in the beam because all their control circuits suddenly responded to the increased power of the radio station. So now we go to the region uh, which is usually closed uh, during experiment because there we have radiation inside. So now uh, this is the place where the new elements are actually produced. So here the, the targets are mounted. Um, the beam is coming from here, from the accelerator, which you have just seen. Along the tube. Along the tube here. Uh, then the beam is uh, directed into the center of the target. And I can show you just such a target wheel, which we use here. Here you see such a target wheel, uh, which is mounted on the axis of this motor here. 
uh, it's then it's like this in the beam. The beam hits the targets here, and the wheel rotates with about 1,000 revolutions per minute. Yeah, here you see the original of our target box, and all the six elements which were made at GSI were made here in this box. I will show you the biggest secret now. <laughs> so this is now our detector area. <clears throat> and here the ions are uh, coming from the separator and uh, they are implanted into a silicon detector. Yes. And this detector is now within this box. Yes. And now I will show you how it looks like yes. and I will open the box. I'm very excited. Never seen anything like this before. So it's really a real first for me. I've never met anybody who's discovered an element. So, now you see our secret. Uh, you see, this is the main part uh, for the identification and detection of the elements. The beam comes from here and this detector is then mounted in this direction. Yeah? The whole system is cooled to minus 20 degrees and this gives us a much better energy resolution. When a particle comes into the detector, we measure the time when it's arrived, yes. and this can be done within a microsecond yes. accuracy. Uh, then we measure the energy uh, of the particle which comes into the detector, and we measure at which place in the detector. And this we can do with a precision of 0.1 millimeter. Yeah, usually it is hidden in the vacuum box and you don't see it. I just uh, opened it to show it to you. Do you feel like this is a piece of history? Certainly. Our first version which we had is already in a museum, in the Deutsche Museum in uh, Bonn now. And this is already a second version and an improved one. Yeah, with this uh, detector in the museum, we saw the elements 107, 108, 109. And with this detector, we saw 110, 11, and 12. 